Hello and welcome to this week's study topics. This week we'll be reviewing the upper cervical vertebrae. The cervical spine is made up of seven vertebrae. The first two, C1 and C2, are very unique and are given the names the atlas and axis. Let's start by reviewing the atlas. Here's a question for you. Which of the following anatomical features would you find on the atlas? Body, pedicle, lamina, or spinous process? Feel free to pause and work your way through this question. Were you able to get it right? The answer is none. The atlas has no body, pedicle, lamina, or spinous process. The atlas is essentially two large lateral masses joined by an anterior and posterior arches. C1 serves as a ring that the skull rests upon and articulates with the base of the skull superiorly and the dens inferiorly. Approximately 50% of flexion and extension of the neck happens between the occiput and C1. This is the motion you would make when nodding your head, yes. The atlas has a large palpable transverse process right here. This bony landmark is an attachment point for several small muscles. Can you list these muscles? Next, let's look at C2, or the axis. The axis' most unique characteristic is its strong odontoid process, often referred to as the dens. It rises from the tall body and is a rounded superior projection. The dens provides a rigid vertical axis of rotation for C1, or the atlas, and the head and creates the no neck movement. Let's ask this question again. Which of the following anatomical features would you find on the axis? The body, pedicle, lamina, or spinous process? This is a tricky one because the answer is all of them. The axis is composed of a vertebral body, heavy pedicles, lamina, and transverse processes, which serve as the attachment point for many muscles. The axis articulates with the atlas via its superior facets, which are convex and face upward and outwards, almost in the direction towards the eyes. Now that you have a general idea of the upper cervical anatomy, let's review using a mock style question. So here's the vignette. Your patient with rheumatoid arthritis is experiencing upper quadrant neurological symptoms. You want to assess their cervical spine stability before proceeding with range of motion testing. The question here is, given your patient's symptoms, which of the following is the most appropriate test? Again, feel free to pause as you work your way through this question. Let's start from the bottom. Brzezinski's sign assesses for meningitis, so this wouldn't be correct. The VBI is used to determine if there is adequate blood supply to the brain by compressing the vertebral basilar artery and examining for onset of symptoms, so this wouldn't be correct either. Traction and compression is used to determine if there is spinal root impingement causing radicular symptoms, which is not what the question is asking. If we look, the vignette tells us two key points. The patient has RA with upper neurological symptoms, and we want to assess cervical stability. So, the sharp purser assesses the integrity of the transverse ligament, as well as the upper cervical spine instability, so A is correct. Thanks for joining me this week on Study Topics. Are you looking for help to prepare for your upcoming exam? Head over to ptprep.ca where you can learn all about our courses. If you still have questions, shoot us an email at info at ptexamprep.ca. Thanks for joining me today.